Hello and welcome back to Minecraft. Now you may notice that today Minecraft isn't really looking like Minecraft. And that's because in this video, as you probably know by the title, we're exploring the map making techniques and terrain generation, how to get the overall aesthetic of your world to look interesting. Now all I can really do here is introduce you to the programs and show you how to use them. So I'm going to do that and I'm also going to encourage you as always to just go ahead and experiment with these programs because the only way you're going to get good at it is through actually messing around with it. So this is World Painter and it's a brilliant tool for basically setting up your terrain and overall shape of the land. Now what I generally do is create new worlds. So this is the default world you get when you start it up. So I'm going to click no, I don't want to save it. And this gives you a whole bunch of options that you can use. So I often go with an ocean seed because you can create an island around that and make it look all quite cool. But there's a whole bunch of things that you can go with. Circular worlds often end up looking pretty cool. So you can just mess around with all of these, change the surface material and whatnot. So let's go wild and make the surface material out of... Um, Soul sand, no, that look ridiculous. Obsidian, sandstone, awesome. Um, biomes, automatic, custom. You can do whatever you want. I'll leave you to do that. So this looks good to me. Let's create the world. As you can see, we have this nice circular thing. So let's introduce some of the tools around here. They're all fairly straightforward. This is obviously creating a pyramid, and if perhaps you skipped your geography classes and you can't understand at all what's going on on screen then the lines each represent a change in height now I believe that they currently represent a change of 10 blocks and as you can see there are also more lines which I think are the representations of a change of one block and they only really appear over a longer sort of distance when you have more shallow slopes and the idea is that we can mold the terrain using these tools. So these pyramidal tools, they're all right. They're not too bad, but I tend not to use them because I much prefer this here. And by the way, just by doing that, fairly straightforward, it fills in the sort of lower lands. And if you keep clicking, it will fill up more blocks worth of ocean. Or if you're going to go for lava, you can just do that. That's pretty cool. Why don't we do this? Let's, let's go ahead. We'll make some sort of deathly, larvary looking desert. Why the hell not? So this is the one I quite like. You press with the left button and you're going to raise the terrain. You press with the right button, you're going to bring it down. As you can see, we can create all sorts of strange things. I'm kind of flattening out those pyramids and bring them back up and generally distort a whole bunch of things. If you use the mouse button, you can scroll and increase and decrease the size of the things that you're editing. So I'm just going to create a sort of a central island and bring down this. But as you can see, things are happening fairly slowly. So in order to change that, we're going to adjust the intensity. As you can see, we're instantly speeding up the process. And we've got some water appearing because um, on the settings, I set it to automatically have water at a certain level. And that was a default. You could have changed that to lava if you're going for a proper theme with lava. But I'm going to leave it as water just so I think it'll make some interesting effects. With the water and lava clashing, I think that would be pretty cool. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. I mean, again, I'm just sort of messing around with the program. You, you can do something serious for your own thing. As you can see, by tightening the contour lines, we're creating mountains. And you can sort of create a general shape and structure to your environment. Now, this is all well and good. You can fiddle around with these programs, these um, tools. But something to keep in mind is these tools are on the side here. These are arguably probably some of the most useful tools to this program. Without it, it just wouldn't be the same. It allows you to give a much more organic and natural sense to your environment. Before, it was just smooth hills. And something I want to introduce to you is this here, the Show 3D View. And it gives you a nice sort of overlay. It's not perfect. It's not great graphics and some of the shapes and there's no shadows, but it looks pretty awesome and works very well just to show you what you're doing. So I haven't mentioned yet about how you can just change the terrain in which you're using. And if we just 
try and select the right tool. Let's um, see if we can find it. We can get grass. There you go. So you can see now I'm spreading grass along the terrain. For one, I could change that to soul sand. Make it all soul sand desert. That looks pretty cool. And for the sake of it, we're going to throw some ice in there. Why the hell not? Just to sort of make this look like the weirdest thing you've ever seen. Um, solid lava blocks, which will be source blocks as opposed to that. Um, we can throw in some obsidian. That'll look pretty, pretty crazy. I'm not going for anything particularly mad here. Well, actually we are. That's exactly what we're going for. As you can see, that looks pretty damn incredible. Now, let's see what else we can do. Actually, let's see what that's looking like. Um, where did our 3D view go? Let's just bring it back up. View 3D. As you can see, that looks pretty damn ridiculous. But we're going to go. We're going to roll with it. You can do whatever the hell you want on your world. We're going to continue with this. And of course, just to investigate. There's a smooth tools. There's all sorts of interesting things for you to play around with. So, go wild. I'm going to be back in a minute where we're going to actually be inside our world. And we're going to see how that is. But first, I'm just going to show you how to save it. Fairly straightforward. Save world as. And you can save the world painter world. And that's useful if you want to sort of look at the world. But the thing you're really going to want to do in order to get it into Minecraft is export as a new Minecraft map. And you can mess with a couple extra things and do this. You know, do whatever the hell you want. But I'll see you back in the world. Alright, so we're back in the Minecraft Select World menu. And as you can see, here's our generated world. You can go ahead and rename that, but I'm not going to bother. Let's just jump on in. I'm expecting just a little bit of lag. <laughs> with all that water and lava going off, and we seem to have lightning, which is interesting. Um, so let's do... Oh, I think I'm in creative mode already. Um, awesome. Well, that's certainly very interesting. Um, let's allow this a minute just to load up. And as you can see, it looks fairly ridiculous. I mean, oh my goodness gracious me. If you have epilepsy, I am sorry. I'm just going to switch my text pack real quick. And default text pack. There we go. Now the water looks like water. We'll be fixing that water texture pack bug that you just saw in another video. So if you're interested in that, then there'll be some sort of annotation at some point, or just check out the channel. Alright, so as you can see, this looks fairly ridiculous. And not something that you're probably ever going to really use in your map. I'm very confused as to why the sky keeps changing colour. Let's see, let's have a look at the... Ah... I understand. Now the reason for this is because of the biome changes, which is really interesting because it's something we're going to be getting into. And in fact, considering that we've run into this problem, I think that it's a good idea to show you how to adjust your biomes and use that in your maps because there's some pretty awesome techniques. Um, I'm going to be using a program called Biome Painter. If you ever heard of it, it's pretty awesome. There will be. I'll be doing a quick tutorial on it now, but if you want a long, nice, in-depth tutorial, I highly suggest going and checking out this guy called Sisphalia, or Time of Souls. There'll be a link annotation on the screen now through the magic of movie editing. So go check him out if you want some more in-depth tutorial and what we're about to cover. But yeah, let's hop on over to Biome Painter and sort out this awful epileptic issue. Alright, so I've opened up the program Biome Painter, which will be available to download in the description. And I've looked through a couple of these regions to find the area. The way it works is each of these regions is pretty much like, I think, a Minecraft chunk, if I'm correct. Um, and the idea is you just sort of scroll through until you find the sort of right area. And you can use the arrow keys at the bottom here to sort of navigate your way through. But what we're going to be doing is, as you can see, there's hundreds of little spots around here. And if I scroll over, you can see... A little indicator right next to my right next to my cursor keeps changing, and that's because all of these are individual different biomes which have been created by our lovely world painter thing. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be selecting it, and that's by going to be using the selection tool. 
cartography and I'm just gonna basically select the entire screen and I'll just allow us to basically change it all to the same biome but you can go wild and just sort of select individual areas and it's really useful because you can go to the single block and change everything nice and individually so let's go ahead and make this a mushroom island um, there we go as you can see it's changed the color and if I just deselect the selection you can see there's all this sort of purple color and all the biomes have their own sort of color which make them nice and easy to sort of differentiate from one another and you can sort of selection box off and all these sort of things off just by clicking these buttons on the top here um, so that's just nice now let's navigate downwards save the changes to the chunk and navigate down it's just reading region file and apparently not responding it does that when you try and record at the same time now where's it gone goodness gracious okay here it is um, although we do not seem to be anywhere of any use so let's have a little scroll around see if we can't find the right region alrighty so this one um, yeah that, that'll do for now we'll, we'll just give another example and then we will get on with it so this one generating map terrain or terrain map awesome so we're just gonna do this fill it in again and you get the general idea you just keep going around filling in the biomes and I'll do that and then we'll go back into our world and see what we've done all right so I'm back in the world and as you can see the crazy lighting bug is certainly gone we are as you can see at the bottom of this screen we are in the mushroom island biome and yeah we're pretty much ready to start adding the sort of fine details so that'd be the next video the part two to this so i hope you tune in for that and i am really quite impressed with the fact that i'm at maximum lighting recording and still getting a good 40 frames per second usually i don't get that when i'm not recording which is very strange but oh well hope you guys have enjoyed the video so that's all that's all for today and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching